So this is a ripple tank and it allows us to show different wave behaviours. So I'm going to take you through uh, reflection, refraction and diffraction all by using this ripple tank here which is making waves on water. Gorilla physics! <laughs> I always think I like to tell this to children that it's a bit like a pleasure pool where you've got a wave machine and at the very front of the wave machine is a big bar which is going up and down underneath the water and that makes the waves, literally physically, mechanically, is making those waves. This is exactly the same thing, we've got a bar at the back, that's initially we're going to use a bar to give us some um, flat waves, give us some even wave fronts uh, and then we're going to use our various different accoutrements to observe the different wave behaviours. So just before you demonstrate this in the classroom, just make sure you know what all the different knobs do. Obviously on the left I've got on and off, that just starts it vibrating or not. On the, the left hand um, knob here changes the frequency. Okay. And on the right hand side is the switch for the strobe light, and I hope you can kind of see this on the um, camera. The strobe light obviously flickers and you can change the frequency of that as well. If I put it right at the top, you can change the frequency to a very low frequency flashing, very high, which is going to look like a solid on, but it is actually turning on and off very quickly. Now, the nice thing about this is you can just sync that to the speed, the, sorry, to the frequency of the waves. And that means that uh, the strobe is always always going to be the same frequency as the waves and I'd recommend most of the time you're just going to use that unless you're using it for A level. You can't, still can't really see much can you? You haven't got much, it's, it's almost too shallow to really see isn't it? So we're just going to use that strobe to project it onto the built-in screen above. Now hopefully you can see this and you will be able to see this on the camera because of course the strobe is only going to be on at the, at the same frequency as the wave so what it's doing is it's kind of pausing the wave. If I turn the strobe off, or rather if I turn it on a very high frequency, you see the waves are actually moving. They're moving along, they're moving through the water. But because it's synced to the frequency of the waves, they appear as if they're not moving at all. And that allows us to do some analysis on the wave fronts. There we go, I think you can see that pretty well. I don't need to be pitch black in the room, but it helps if it's just a little bit darker. What I'm doing firstly, I'm just increasing the frequency. And it's a really nice demonstration straight away of the wave speed equation where frequency is inverse the wavelength. So if I increase the frequency, then I decrease the wavelength. Okay, and you can see that happening as I go through the frequencies here. Once you've used this to establish frequency and wavelength, I suggest moving on to um, reflection. Now you've got reflection straight away because actually the wave is coming from the uh, oscillator here, reflecting off the far side of the pool and reflecting back. So you've already kind of done that. If you change the angle, then it will reflect in different directions. But I like this one here. This is just a simple curved piece of metal which can sit in the water like this. And hopefully you'll be able to see this and you might need to adjust the frequency just slightly. What happens here is the waves all reflect from the different parts of the, um, the curved piece there. And you get them reflecting and focusing therefore on one point. And it's worth just changing to find where you kind of get most of this effect here. I think it's just about there, isn't it? Okay, it's a very useful description of how a solar mirror works or a solar collector. But really, what this is a demonstration for is the law of reflection. Because actually, if we were to take tangents from any point of this and plot our normals, we would see that the angle of incidence was always equal to the angle of reflection. That's very good to do, I suppose. It might be a little bit hard for some low-level students, but I think it's a good demonstration anyway. From this, you can also get the idea of interference and wave superposition. If you look at how bright this point is and how dark this point is, you can see that waves are superimposing on here. We're focusing the light there. In fact, they are deeper waves here than they are here. And if you wanted to get them the idea of how light adds up, maybe a triple science group, then this is a very useful demonstration to go into a bit more detail with. 
you wanted to, you could just put in a simple flat piece of metal and you will get a bit of reflection. But because we're, we're getting standing waves inside this pool, you're not going to really see perfect reflection. But you can kind of see the reflected waves as they come off in that direction there. Might be worth doing that. I, I don't know. I think it's more interesting how they're all adding up here and how the waves don't particularly diffract into this corner. But um, it's up to you to judge with your classes. Next one is where this ripple tank is possibly weakest. But um, this is the demonstration for refraction. And it is just simply a glass block which allows you to change the depth of the water. Now, you, you've established that the wave speed is the same everywhere in this ripple tank. But when it's going to change is where it goes to a different depth of water. So now hopefully I can see that the waves are refracting. Yes, you can see that a little bit. You can see it curving off. There should be straight, straight line wave fronts, but you can see hopefully the wave is hitting the boundary and then it is changing direction, which establishes refraction for you. Okay, it's not as good as I've seen it before on other ripple tanks, I must admit but it does get you that idea. You can hopefully also see that because the wave speed has changed, and it's not changed much, the wave length has changed slightly on there as well. Okay, now that is, is key really, isn't it? The, the, the wave is less fast in the shallower water, therefore the wave speed changes, therefore the wave changes direction. I think that's a, a really clear demonstration of that. You can actually demonstrate this using two block shapes. Now, even though the water wave isn't traveling through these, it is being refracted in just the same way as I've just demonstrated with the larger glass block. So it's a very nice little demonstration here for how different lenses work. Now, you may have to twiddle with the frequency to find where it works best. But if you imagine plotting some of those rays, you can see that that is a diverging lens. you can just about see the two lines spreading out there and so if I put this shape in here then I should see the opposite I should see it converging yeah I think we can just about see that it's not great but you're going to do these with optics anyway and it just it just links that idea of the Wave speed is changing, therefore you're getting refraction. And this is what happens optically in, um, in lenses. This is the last of the simple demonstrations. This is the last of the free wave behaviors. We've done reflection, we've done refraction. Now we just need to do diffraction. And diffraction, for most kids at core science or additional science, they need to just know that diffraction occurs when the gap size between two obstacles is roughly equal to the wavelength. So if I make the wavelength a bit longer, we should see more diffraction. And you can see that semicircular pattern after the gap there. And in fact, if I go higher frequency, a shorter wavelength, you don't get quite as much diffraction. Now you can see they're all carrying on in their straight lines. It can change the, the gap size though, make the gap size a lot smaller, closer to the wavelength, and hopefully we should see diffraction. Now, yes, we're getting that semicircular pattern again. It doesn't show up very well on the camera, I must admit that. There we go there, it's, it's quite a nice one there, isn't it? Okay, so that just shows them how waves spread out as they go through a gap, and you can talk about well, the waves are getting slowed down and getting slowed down more the closer they are to the edge, if you like. So if you just have one of these, that's if anyone's got any questions, you just have one of these, you can see it kind of is still diffracting off that one edge. I think that's, that's a useful thing to show them. That it's not really just because of the gap, it's because of the, the boundary. It depends, as I say, if they've got any questions, really for a low level group, you're just after do you guys know that the closer it is to the gap size, the closer the gap size is to the wavelength, the more diffraction you are getting. Very, if there's a very big difference, less diffraction. 
There are two other dippers that you get in the set with this one. And one is a single dipper, so it's just a point dipper. That's going to give us nice circular um, waves. And then a double dipper. Now that is really just for your triple scientists or your A-levels. Okay, but I'll come on to that in a moment. I'll just pause it while I take the bar dipper off and place the single dipper on. And this really is just kind of basic one really, oh, so I'm doing the opposite way around, um, which shows you that waves go in all directions. Waves are radial. Yeah, that's where the word radiation comes from. Waves go in all directions. Okay, let's have a little look at that. Ah, oh, there we go, perfect. Semicircular pattern, oh sorry, circular pattern this time. Nice and easy. Final one is really just for um, triple science students at GCSE, but it could be you. It could be interesting for other science students. Um, it it is two dippers, and it actually simulates. Well, what if those waves hit two diffraction um, gratings, or they hit two gaps, and they diffracted into two semicircular patterns? Well, what would happen? Uh, something very very interesting happens you get superposition and you get these diffraction patterns being made i have a video where i go through the analysis of that but hopefully you can see the lines where the water is completely still there's no peaks and troughs the there's no like points at which um there's no disturbance at all and those points are what we call um destructive interference points or zero points they're points of zero energy transfer and in between those, you're getting points of maximum energy transfer. Can you see that? Where actually, if, especially if you look in the middle here, you can see that the, the fringes are twice as dark or twice as bright. And that is because they're actually constructively superposing on one another. And they're constructively adding up to be a much greater uh, displacement. So in between those lines, you're getting points where the... Um, Waves are meeting in phase, and because they're meeting in phase, they're adding together and making twice the energy transfer. Uh, this is because, let's have a little think about that. If you're from here to any one of these points, you've traveled a full wavelength further than if you get there from here. So the path difference is one wavelength, meaning the phase difference is zero. This is a very, very nice little demonstration of that. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.